Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Red spray paint on a Texas treasure has some people seeing red. Well, San Antonio police say that taggers targeted the Cenotaph at Alamo Plaza overnight, as well as two other downtown spots with ties to that history. As Katrina Weber reports, some speculate another battle was behind all the vandalism. Moments after midnight is when San Antonio police caught their first whiff of spray painted trouble downtown. A message in red appeared on the Alamo Cenotaph. Soon, police found markings on a wall on La Soya Street. They also arrested a man who they tied to tagging near Travis Park. While they're not sure if the cases are connected, all the sites are linked to those who fought that famous battle. Uh, uh, I'm aghast. I'm appalled. I can't believe that somebody would do that. Daniel Escovel had trouble finding words in reaction to those written on the monument. This is something that's sacred to Texas. It's the same thing as desecrating someone's headstone. Justin Seiler, a descendant of two Alamo defenders, says he takes the vandalism personally. Although we're not showing the taggings entirely, the messages take a stand against white supremacy and police brutality. To me, there's a fine line between protest and what's going on in Minneapolis and this. A worker quickly tried to undo the damage on La Soya Street, but someone else with red paint soon added to his troubles. It seems like whoever painted over the original graffiti didn't like the message. But a worker who now has to clean this up says it all amounts to the same headache. At the Alamo, though, the sentiment was more about heartache. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In Minnesota, there are growing frustrations in the criminal investigation into the death of George Floyd. The FBI now joining the probe, the DOJ calling it a top priority. George Floyd died in police custody. Four officers were fired. However, no arrests have been made. We are conducting a robust and meticulous investigation into the circumstances surrounding the events of May 25th, 2020 and the police officers' actions. Investigation includes interviewing dozens of witnesses and securing any additional video. Meanwhile, we're learning more about Derek Chauvin, the former officer who was shown with his knee on Floyd's neck for at least seven minutes until he lost consciousness and died. Police records show that he has faced 18 complaints over the course of his 19 year career with the Minnesota Police Department, and he was disciplined for two of them. We do not know, though, what the complaints were for. Tests and anger across the country, but also responses for how peace officers can do a better job. Right here at home, the Bear County Sheriff's Office making sure that their cadets can be properly trained when it comes to recognizing misconduct of their fellow deputies. Sarah Costa tells us about that training program, which was held this morning. Recognizing when a fellow officer has gone too far, or more importantly, not being afraid to speak up or intervene when it happens. That was the goal behind a training session this morning for the Bear County Sheriff's Office patrol cadets. The class was created by the New Orleans Police Department and all deputies with the Bear County Sheriff's Department have taken the class since it was implemented in September of 2019. Sheriff Javier Salazar says he wanted to drive home the message of stepping in when you see something that is not right. He says George Floyd's death was not okay and it's why he wanted the cadets to have a refresher course this morning. I felt it was appropriate in light of what's going on in the country to again just remind them that, that look it's not okay what happened out there is not okay. Uh, the fact that those officers uh, stood by and did nothing while a fellow officer killed somebody is not okay. And so we're just again letting them know that it's it's not just not just that it's socially acceptable. It's it's expected of you. The sheriff says he hopes the class can serve as a reminder of the importance of stepping in when cadets and deputies see wrongdoing because he believes it can save a life. From home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Police say a shooting at a Northside motel may have been drug related. It happened near the 11,000 block of San Pedro, just off of Highway 281 and south of Wurzbach Parkway. Police say that just before 2 a.m., five suspects drove away from the scene following the shooting. They were all eventually caught and detained. SAPD says the shooting victim is in stable condition. 
Police arrested a woman in connection to a stabbing just north of downtown. It happened just before three this morning in the 800 block of West Magnolia Street. According to police, they arrived and found the victim on the floor with a cut on his torso. The victim told police that 48 year old Guadalupe Moreno stabbed him for no reason. He was then taken to the hospital in serious condition. Moreno is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. As Texans try to return to normal, Governor Greg Abbott announcing that fans will be allowed at professional sporting events in most counties starting today. The governor had previously said no fans would be allowed. The change allows fans up to 25% of a venue's capacity with guidelines to control the spread of coronavirus. Water parks will be allowed to reopen. However, Splashtown and Schlitterbahn won't open until next month. And recreational sports programs for adults can start up on Sunday. Are you a San Antonio Zoo pass holder? Well, you could reserve a visit this weekend. And for the first time in more than two months, the zoo is reopening tomorrow for pass holders only. You do have to make a reservation online and keep in mind the carousel, train and kitty park will remain closed. The zoo will reopen for standard admission on June the 1st. VIA riders, meantime, only have a few more days to take advantage of the system-wide fare relief period that began all the way back in March. VIA bus fare will start up again on Monday. Passes and tickets can be purchased online through the ticketing app or at ticket windows. What's not changing is the health and safety measures, including enhanced and overnight cleanings and the limit on passengers on buses. Only 16 people are allowed on board and the essential service schedule is remaining the same. There is another uptick in local coronavirus numbers. 50 more cases have been reported. Bear County now has 2,583 total COVID-19 cases. The number of deaths has increased to 71. The number of recoveries sits at 1,368 and more than 1,100 people are still fighting the virus. 95 people are in the hospital. Meanwhile, Comal County opening up a free one day drive through testing site. It's happening tomorrow at the Bill Brown Elementary School. The site will be open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and an appointment is required. Before getting tested, people will be screened for COVID-19 symptoms. The site is expected to test between 50 and 60 people. You could register by calling 512-883-2400 or go online at txcovidtest.org. Happening right now on the city's northeast side, a mass distribution of face coverings for anyone who may need one. Herman and Herman Law Firm has teamed up with Cowboys Alamo City Harley Davidson to help flatten the curve of COVID-19 cases in our community. The event wraps up in about an hour and Alicia Barrera has more on why the law firm says that they decided to take this approach. As of early Friday morning, families lined up at Cowboy Alamo City Harley Davidson's drive through shop. We heard on Channel 12 they were giving out uh, some masks. So uh, it's, a, it's an honor and it's a, it's a blessing for them to do this, you know, for, for the city of San Antonio. Although they're already equipped with a face covering, Tom and his wife know they'll need more, which is why they wanted to take advantage of the free giveaway. It is difficult to get them, you know, uh, like this one here, I, I bought this through a Harbor Freight, you know, and uh, I run a lot every day and I wear them out. You know, this can't be watched compared to what she's wearing, you know. Herman and Herman, the Corpus Christi-based law firm, says they've donated more than 50,000 masks across Central and South Texas to help keep the community safe and wanted to bring the event to San Antonio. In a lot of cities, uh, in order for people to take public transportation, they have to have masks on, and those people sometimes can't even get them, so we're providing them with resources that they need to go about their life and, uh, and to just to protect themselves. Although a long line, there's plenty to go around as they've prepped with more than 10,000 masks. These are the masks that Herman and Herman will be passing out. They're full coverage, breathable, but also withstand a quality test that you may want to look out for when shopping for masks. The test is if you can blow out a candle, it's a bad mask. So we tried that with this mask and we, we tried to blow out a candle and you can't do it. <laughs> Biker Jose Olalde says waiting in line with his dog Gio Ginobili is worth it and a blessing. Oh, because of the coronavirus, I'm, I'd rather be safe. Event organizers hope to reach as many people as possible before the drive through giveaway wraps up at 1 p.m. today. Thank you. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. 
The San Antonio Food Bank hosting another grocery giveaway for local families in need. And a familiar face was among the volunteers, Senator John Cornyn. U.S. Senator John Cornyn is urging Texans to volunteer with their local food banks if they are able to, noting that many Texas food banks have taken precautionary measures in order to accommodate social distancing and other safety guidelines from the CDC. He says it's one way to keep from feeling helpless during this pandemic. But the other way to do it is to uh, do like the volunteers that are out here at the San Antonio Food Bank, come out and help other people. There's nothing that sort of gets your mind off of your own problems more than uh, helping others. Before, uh, before the, the San Antonio Food Bank typically serves about 58,000 families a week. However, since the coronavirus outbreak, their clients have more than doubled to approximately 120,000 a week. During March and April of this year, they distributed 17 million pounds of food to San Antonians in need, including socially distanced service with drive through getaways. If you plan to head out of the house next week, there are some lane closures to be aware of. Beginning Tuesday, June 2nd, Public Works is closing two lanes on San Saba and one lane on Houston Street. And they're doing this to remove pavement and sidewalks along San Saba at Milan Park. Uniformed officers will help direct traffic. And these closures are expected to last until Friday, August the 7th. The 2020 Warrior Games have been canceled due to the ongoing health concerns surrounding the coronavirus pandemic. The games were originally scheduled to happen in several sporting venues around the city from September 20th through the 28th. Now, this would have marked the 10th anniversary of the annual competition that involved wounded, ill and injured service members. Well, more time at home means more online shopping for some, including Ursula. Still <laughs> ahead on the news at noon, why UPS is adding extra charges to packages. How'd you know? <laughs> Just a guess. We have a tragic story southwest of Houston. A deputy constable uh, was shot by another deputy. We're going to tell you what led up to this shooting after the break. A deputy constable has died after a Fort Bend County Sheriff's deputy accidentally shot him. Investigators tell our sister station KPRC that the man was a father of five. KPRC's Vincent Crivelli details what happened early this morning. This morning, neighbors showed their support for law enforcement. We're sorry for your loss. Um, I made it black and blue. Christina Potter says she wants deputies to know that she cares. I mean, they've been working all night, so, um, and this, their hearts are breaking. The emotion palpable from Sheriff Troy Nails. What else do you say? You gotta pray for everybody. Um, just a tragic, uh, tragic scene here. Nail says the situation started around 1.40 this morning. A neighbor called and stated that uh, she saw an individual running down the street and called and thought it was a little suspicious. Three sheriff's deputies and Precinct 4 Constable Deputy Caleb Rule responded to a vacant house. They entered the residence through a back door that was uh, not secure. They were then going through the process of clearing the home. Then the sheriff says one of his deputies thought Rule was an intruder and opened fire. Rule passed away at a hospital. You ask about the emotion. Uh, you know, how do you how do you explain? Uh, how do you? The sheriff lost for words as neighbors try to provide comfort. It's very, very sad into my heart. I send prayers out to the family, to the deputy's family, as, as well as to our community here. Very tragic story. Meantime, looking at live cam right now, this might be the first day and how many four or five days that we haven't <laughs> put our entire meteorological team on point. Yeah, we're going to take a little bit of a break today. We're still going to get you a good forecast. Don't worry about that. But we're going to take a little bit of a break from the severe weather and the aquifer. It's still responding, still on its way up. Seven tenths of a foot, 670.7. That's that's great number uh, considering where we were uh, And mold. Still in the high category to 9680 grass is low. We've got a pretty good weekend coming up. We're going to share that forecast with you coming up. Justin, 
you're on break. <laughs> okay. No you hail still, today. You, ha you still have to do the weather. Okay. During the noon show, but yeah. but we're putting you on break for the rest I, I of the weekend. I appreciate that. You deserve it. That. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> and kudos to the whole weather team. Oh and, yeah, absolutely. And National Weather Service. Too. It's been it's been a busy last few days, uh, but things are looking up. We're going to get a better weekend, and the aquifer really, uh, you know, has jumped up a lot, and that's because of the weather that we've seen. Now we could do without the severe weather, of course, but the rainfall has been good to see. 10.6 feet. That's how much it is up since May 12th. That's when the pattern became a little bit more active. As of today, it's at 670.7. We got really close to the 660 mark uh, earlier this month, and now it has rebounded quite significantly. So that's good as we go into the summer months. Uh, we want to see that. For the month of May, we're at 5.77 inches. That's two inches above the average. Since January 1st, we're now at 13.12 inches. That's up about an inch and a half. And as we look at the satellite picture here, all is clear as far as radar is concerned. We've got some showers in deep south Texas, but nothing here for our immediate area. And you can see some of the clouds trying to develop. These are just fair weather clouds, though. A little bit of high cloudiness, too. So it's not going to be perfect, perfectly sunny today, uh, but we'll get plenty of sun and temperatures uh, will jump up uh, pretty quickly here. Let's take a look at the water vapor. So the upper level low that has been behind all of this wild weather is finally, finally moving away. It's getting pulled up and it's going to sort of fall apart. Another little disturbance that's diving south that helped to create some of those storms this morning. That is also moving away. High pressure will start to build in, and that means quiet weather for the weekend. Outside right now, there you see partly cloudy skies, 84 degrees. Dew point is at 64. That number is not too bad. Mid 60s is still muggy, but it's not overly humid. North northeasterly winds at about 9 miles per hour are helping us out. In that regard, 86 in New Braunfels, 80 Canyon Lake, 80 in Comfort, 80 right now, Tarpley, 84 in Hondo, and checking in at 88 in Del Rio. It did get up to 100 there yesterday, despite those storms, uh, but it will be a little bit cooler today. And looking at the dew points, we mentioned that uh, they'll be on their way down. Yeah, probably low 60s this afternoon, even this evening. Might be a great uh, evening for a walk or if you're going to be uh, out and about. Not so bad with the slightly lower humidity levels. So here's a look at the upper level winds, and this is what we can expect going forward. High pressure is going to build in, and that'll keep things quiet both Saturday and Sunday, I think. Now, Sunday afternoon, there could be a couple of showers to our south. This little disturbance here tries to work north as high pressure moves off to the north. And, I, and by Monday, we could be looking at some isolated showers and storms again. But with that being said, it doesn't look like we're going to see widespread severe weather or anything like that. This is not quite what we were looking at last week, but I do want to alert you there could be some rain on the radar Monday afternoon, and this may linger over into Tuesday as well. 88 degrees today, we'll call it partly cloudy. Northwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then coming up tomorrow, 89, 90 on Sunday with a 20% chance of rain mainly to the south. We're not going to worry too much about that, but a 30% chance on Monday and another 20% chance on Tuesday. From there, temperatures will start to warm up a bit back into the low 90s. And I should also mention, too, out in the Atlantic, we've got a potentially developing tropical system, or at least a subtropical system. We could have our third named storm of the season, and the season technically hasn't even started yet. So we do know it's going to be a busy uh, season out there in the Atlantic, and we'll keep you posted there, too, guys. We hope it's kept far, far away for now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Justin. And after the break, we introduce you to a senior who never let her struggles get in the way of her college dreams. Stay with us. It's been a very different year for students everywhere, especially graduating seniors. Absolutely. Here at KSET, we are shining a spotlight on seniors all across the city. In this great graduate piece, Stephanie Cerner introduces us to Corinthia Hensley, who graduated early from Allison Steele Enhanced Learning Academy. I motivated myself because I wanted to, to be able to graduate. Before spring break and before the coronavirus pandemic, Corinthia Hensley graduated from high school. It, it made me, I guess, realize my potential. Corinthia is an amazing student. She is talented. She's creative, hardworking. Corinthia plans on going to San Antonio College and then to UTSA to study psychology. I realized if I can get past you know, what I'm going through, I can I can use this to help other people. 
And that's why I, I wanted to get into psychology. Although Carinthia has a bright future ahead of her, she tells us there were times in her life when it was difficult to move forward. I was bullied in middle school and um, I, I went through some other things. Carinthia has had some dark times. She has been through a pretty rough road, taken some hits through no fault of her own, but she has her sights set on a bright future. She's had, you know, foster care workers, shelter workers, case managers involved in her life, and she is very excited to have control over her own life. Finally, that day that I finished everything, I, I, I graduated and they gave me my transcript, and it, it, was, it was an amazing feeling. Like, I, like, I finally got through this. Um, my hard work, it, it paid off, and that was awesome. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Margarita fans, listen up. Some margarita trucks will be rolling around the city to deliver alcoholic beverages and food. Chef Johnny Hernandez thought about the idea after his restaurants were forced to close, of course, due to the pandemic. Well, only one truck is out right now, but we can expect five more to be driving around by next month. Hernandez expects that the trucks now being a permanent part of his company and he's looking forward to anyone and everyone getting the chance to enjoy some great food and drinks, whether in his restaurant or in their home. Reminds me of an adult ice cream truck or something like that. It reminds me of Louisiana because they've got <laughs> stuff <laughs> like that stuff all like over that. Louisiana. Still ahead on the news at noon, staying in the right headspace during the quarantine. The new app offering free help to those who are currently unemployed. And today at five, if boredom has struck while you're stuck at home. It may be time to break out the games, video games that is. Several top tech companies are now offering video game subscriptions and they're accessible by a number of devices. A 12 on your side, look at which option will work best for you today at five after entertainment tonight. We want to bring you the latest out of Minneapolis, where the Associated Press is now reporting that the officer that you saw on video kneeling on the neck of George Floyd has now been arrested. This coming in just now. Uh, we don't know the charges exactly. We'll let you know as soon as we get more information. Meanwhile, there are buildings there in Minneapolis still on fire and debris in the street today. Yeah, protesters and residents are responding to the news that no charges had been filed up until this point and that four officers were involved in the death of George Floyd. The news prompting protests in Minneapolis, of course, all week long and around the nation. ABC's Zachary Kish has more on that. The front page of the Minneapolis Star Tribune reading a state of agony. Much of Minneapolis still reeling and up in smoke. Overnight, the community clashed with authorities outfitted in riot gear over the death of 46-year-old George Floyd in the hands of police. Protesters demanding police arrest the officer that killed Floyd. A police precinct breached then burned near the corner where on Monday onlookers pleaded and watched in horror as Floyd was suffocated by an officer's knee for nine minutes. The city of Minneapolis pleading, please retreat in the event that building explodes. A state of emergency declared Minnesota's governor sending 500 members of the National Guard to the area to stabilize a fragile situation. The treatment of black people in America is ridiculous. It is not okay at all. It is um, just very, very sad. And this has been going on for way too many years. And it is time for a change because we are tired. President Trump weighed in on Twitter just before 1 a.m. calling protesters thugs, adding, when the looting starts, the shooting starts in regards to the ongoing unrest. Twitter flagged the tweet for glorifying violence. The same tweet appeared Friday morning on the official White House Twitter account, a government account, and was also flagged. The pain and problems stretch across Minneapolis and beyond. In New York City, police say more than 70 people were arrested or cited. More in Los Angeles, where protesters focused on this police station. And the same in Phoenix, where protesters and police came face to face. Today, the country confronting the deeply divided issues of race. I'm absolutely sorry for the pain, the devastation, and the trauma that Mr. Floyd's death has left on his family, his loved one, uh, our community here in Minneapolis, and certainly across the country and the world. 
The president's inflammatory comments are not new language. Former Miami police chief Walter Healy said, when the looting starts, the shooting starts back in the 1960s in reference to unrest in the black community over issues like poverty. Healy also mentioned that he did not mind being accused of police violence. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. And again, this is a developing story. Uh, we have just learned that the officer that you saw kneeling on uh, Floyd's neck actually has now been arrested, and we await to hear what the charges may be. Moving on, President Donald Trump expected to make a series of announcements on China soon. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo suggesting one of them could be about visa restrictions on Chinese graduate students and researchers. According to the New York Times, the Trump administration intends to cancel cancel visas for thousands of students with ties to universities linked to China's Liberation Army. Another announcement could be about the relationship between U.S. and Hong Kong. Also happening overseas, Iran says its experts will continue nuclear development activities despite sanctions imposed earlier this week. On Wednesday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo imposed sanctions on two officials with Iran's Atomic Energy Organization who are involved in the development and production of centrifuges used to enrich uranium. State TV released a statement saying that the U.S. decision to impose sanctions indicate a hostile attitude and sanctions would make them determined to continue their nonstop efforts more than before. The first ever manned SpaceX launch was rescheduled. It's supposed to happen now tomorrow. The launch was postponed Wednesday due to bad weather conditions that are sweeping across the Cape Canaveral area. If the launch happens this weekend, it'll be the first time in almost a decade that two American astronauts will launch into space from U.S. soil and the first time that a commercial company will carry humans into orbit. Their destination is the International Space Station. NASA partnered up with Elon Musk's privately owned company in order to build and design this spacecraft. I know that story excites Justin. Yeah. <laughs> well, will, will Cape Canaveral be clearer tomorrow? You know what? Uh, there are some more chances for thunderstorms, especially during the afternoon there. So they're going to have to watch the launch again, which I know that's probably not what they want to hear, but uh, hopefully. It'll happen uh, this morning. The sunrise was absolutely incredible. This is one of the cool pictures that I saw. There's a lot of pictures we got in on case I connect, but this is a great one. Uh, man, the colors are just intense there. Uh, C. Keller sent this in and that is a beautiful morning sunrise. Uh, we appreciate the picture. And as we look at the uh, satellite picture right now, we've got some fair weather clouds moving through, but uh, no thunderstorms, anything like that should be a quiet afternoon. We've got a few high clouds streaming in from the south. These clouds happen to be moving north to south. Bottom line, partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures on their way up. 82 degrees, Boulevardy, 86, New Braunfels. Still some 70s around Bernie Stage, 79 right now in Kerrville, 85, Divine, 84 in Hondo. And the forecast for today, Texas up to 88 for a high, maybe a little bit hotter. We're on a trajectory to be a little bit warmer than that, maybe closer to 90. And then uh, temperatures will be slow to cool down tonight, but we're down to 78 by 10 o'clock, northwest Joey winds. 5 to 10 miles per hour. Some great weather over the weekend. Maybe another chance for rain coming up early next week. We'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you. Justin. Many businesses have felt the pressure of the coronavirus pandemic after the break. Some companies that have seen an increase in their businesses. Plus, because of the coronavirus pandemic, we've all been spending a little more time inside. The only thing that seems to keep us busy is new entertainment. Still ahead, we take a look at some of the new things that are streaming right now. And UPS customers could be facing additional charges the next time they order. We'll have details on that coming up next. In your consumer news, UPS now adding surcharges to certain domestic packages because of the coronavirus pandemic. Customers who have ordered oversized items from Amazon or Best Buy may be paying a premium now. UPS says it's because they are experiencing an unprecedented demand for shipping and higher costs. The peak surcharges are subject to change and peak periods could be extended or changed. These new rates take effect May 31st. 
JCPenney says it's reopening 150 stores just two weeks after declaring bankruptcy. The clothing retailer shut down brick and mortar locations due to the coronavirus pandemic, but it's starting to reopen them in stages. JCPenney says it plans to have about 500 stores open again by Wednesday. And while it's reopening some locations based on public health, it's moving to permanently clothes others based on finances. From stay at home orders to less money being spent, this pandemic has been hard on some businesses. However, in some industries, business is booming. RJ Marquez has a look at some of the retail winners and losers. Despite a pandemic, some online business is booming. Target reporting online sales skyrocketed 141% last quarter as the big box chain took advantage of American shopping in bulk from their homes. Amazon also doing better than others, boasting a net sales increase by 26% in the first quarter over that same time period in 2019. Walmart says their e-commerce sales grew 74% this year with strong results for grocery pickup and delivery services. Home improvement stores like Home Depot and Lowe's also reporting increased sales. But others aren't doing well. The airline industry, air travel fell 91% since March in the latest report by the Airlines for America organization. Several major retail companies have also filed for bankruptcy in the past couple of months, including JCPenney, J. Crew and Neiman Marcus, to name a few. Other big names filing for bankruptcy, clothing brand True Religion Apparel, gourmet foods retailer Dean and DeLuca, and Gold's Gym. While filing for bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean the business will shut down, it does mean each one has a long road ahead financially. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. The app Headspace wants to help people who are out of work stay mentally healthy. More than 40 million Americans have filed for unemployment benefits since the U.S. economy shut down for the COVID-19 pandemic. So the app is offering anyone who is employed or rather unemployed for one year a subscription for free. There will be access to hundreds of guided meditations and courses for stress, sleep, and relationships. There's even an at-home workout or two. You can sign up by heading to headspace.com slash unemployed. Usa. Justin. Namaste. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we got 84 degrees at 1243. Yeah. What's going on for the rest of the weekend? It's going to be quiet. And let me say, my yard has never looked so green. I mean, <laughs> we've got a good amount of rain. Of course, uh, half my plants are beat up by the hailstorm that we had a couple <laughs> days ago. But that's okay. Uh, 68 degrees, uh, the low this morning, 84 the high today. We're going to see a pretty average day. We should be right there on the averages, 90 and 70. Records are 102 and 57. And yes, quiet weather today, quiet weather tomorrow. Pretty quiet weather on Sunday, too. Maybe another chance of rain next week. We've got a look at that seven-day forecast coming up. Justin is uh, counting the seconds until he's finally off for the weekend because no, he, no. he put it instead of a 40 hour work week, Justin put in something like, I don't know, 80, 90 hours on storms. And and that doesn't even count him cleaning up his own yard, no, but it was necessary. We had some crazy weather <laughs> yeah. and hopefully things are lightening up. Yeah, they are. It's, it's going to be a, a lot less busy this weekend. And shout out to the whole weather team, by the way. Incredible job. Absolutely. Uh, Amazing. And it's just, it's one of those weeks. We see those around uh, South Texas this time of year. And things are going to quiet down as we get into the weekend. If you're heading to the beach this weekend, it may not be a bad weekend for that. Uh, temperatures will be in the upper 80s, partly cloudy. There could be a stray shower on Sunday. Shouldn't be a big deal. Water temperatures in the mid 80s. Pretty good weekend if you want to head down to Port A or Corpus. There's a look at the visible satellite picture. Yeah, we've got some fair weather clouds coming through north to south, so it's partly cloudy around San Antonio right now. And uh, no rain to speak of until you get down into deep south Texas, and that's what's left over from a complex of showers and storms that developed uh, overnight and is moving south really away from us. We do have some high clouds, though, from that spreading in, too. So bottom line, it's not going to be perfectly sunny today, but partly cloudy skies, and there's enough sun. Uh, to boost those temperatures into the upper 80s, close to 90 in some cases. Here's a look across the country, and it's not only quieter for us, but the entire state of Texas, that upper level low that had been causing all this wild weather is finally moving away. 
That's going to take a lot of the action towards the uh, east coast. And there could be some stronger storms today up across parts of the uh, northeast. And then showers and storms developing on the east coast and getting busy in Florida again. They've had quite a bit of rain lately, but most of the west is pretty quiet. And that's because there's a ridge out there. And that's what's going to be shifting in for us and creating the quiet weather over the weekend. Partly cloudy right now, 84 degrees. Dew point is at 64, so there's not much of a heat index out there. And we've got a north northeasterly breeze at about 9 miles per hour, which is bringing in some of that slightly drier air. 82 right now in Comfort, 81 Canyon Lake, 86 in New Braunfels, 81 Floresville, and 86 down there in Pleasanton. Zooming out some, most everybody's in the 80s with the exception of the Hill Country. Some 70s still there. It's, it's really pretty nice afternoon so far. And those dew points at mid 60s, that's certainly not dry. It's in the muggy category, but it's not as bad as it could be. And I think these numbers will come down a little bit during the afternoon. So it uh, should be a pretty nice evening. Here's what we have to look forward to. There's our ridge five pressure. This is one of those summertime ridges that likes to build in. It is going to move in our direction, but the good news is it's not going to sit over us. So we're not going to see a, a long dry period here, uh, but it does shift towards Texas tomorrow. So I think Saturday is a very quiet day. By Sunday, it starts to shift a little bit to the north, and we've got a little disturbance down here that's going to start to throw some moisture in our direction. I think we could see a couple showers across deep south Texas Sunday afternoon, probably not here in San Antonio. But as we get into Monday, as this disturbance gets a little bit closer, we should start to see some isolated showers and storms. Good news, doesn't look like it's going to be widespread severe weather or anything like that. Just some isolated stuff, uh, some isolated rain. And right now we have about a 30% chance of rain in the seven day forecast for Monday. And that may linger over a little bit into Tuesday as well. So for today, up around 88 degrees, maybe even a little bit warmer than that. Just looking at the current temperatures and northwesterly winds five to 10 miles per hour. Coming up tomorrow, 89, partly cloudy, 90 on Sunday. We'll put in a slight chance of a shower down to the south and then a 30% chance of some showers and storms on Monday, 20% chance Tuesday. And temperatures pretty consistent here across the board, right around 90 each and every day, maybe a little bit warmer next week, guys. Nice little break we have over the weekend. Thank you so much, Justin. From keeping up with local and national news to new movies, there's a lot more available to us online. After the break, we're going to take a look at what's streaming now.